last year, in 2015, um, President Sisi passed a couple of laws, and one of them was the terrorism law. And in the terrorism law, basically, police and military are um, immune from prosecution and being held accountable for basically what he calls performing their acts, which is if they are seen as using force against um, breaking protests, they're immune from prosecution against this. So what this created in Egypt was a culture of um, encur encouraging or actually looking the other way for police brutality. And so this culture, once it continues and it grows, we see police see themselves as immune. So they can go into a hospital and beat up doctors who refuse to falsify reports. They can go into a taxi and if they don't like the fare, kill um, the taxi driver. Egypt's president says he'll propose new laws to curb abuses of power by the security services. President Sisi's statement comes a day after a policeman shot and killed a young taxi driver, which led to protests. The officer in question has now been detained, but it's the latest in a string of incidents of alleged police brutality. Al Jazeera's Banu Batnaga reports. Picking up a police officer as a passenger proved fatal for this taxi driver. Muhammad Ali Ismail was just 24 years old. According to the Egyptian Interior Ministry, the police officer shot and killed him by mistake after an argument over payment. But the thousands who gathered for his funeral don't believe the official version of events. They blame the security forces who they say act with impunity. Witnesses to the killing say the police officer verbally abused Muhammad and when he objected, the officer shot him. The victim's relatives fear their demands for justice are falling on deaf ears. I want the government to bring me justice, the president himself. Why would this policeman shoot my son? What was he guilty of? Is the president happy? We elected him to represent us and to protect us, not to let these criminals kill us. He needs to stop them and every corrupt policeman must face justice. All they care about is to rob us. As long as there is chaos, no one will get punished. There is no justice. We've had it. Enough is enough. Every day one of us gets killed. Why doesn't the government send an official to attend our funerals? Because we are poor. We are nobody. Last week, thousands of doctors protested after two colleagues said they'd been assaulted by police in a Cairo hospital because they wouldn't falsify medical records. More protests are planned. Human rights groups say Egyptian security services often act above the law and are rarely put on trial. When trials do take place, sentences are usually reduced on appeal. I remember two years ago, uh, Mr. Sisi was addressing men in uniform and he explicitly encouraged them to use excessive use of violence against civilians and he promised them that nobody will be punished. <laughs> Many believe this has led to a culture of police brutality, which was one of the main factors in the 2011 uprising that ousted longtime President Hosni Mubarak. Five years after that revolution, it appears the security forces are still to be feared. Bhanu Patnagar, Al Jazeera. Let's get more on this now with Dalia Fahmi, an assistant professor of political science at Long Island University. She joins us from New York. Thank you very much for speaking to us. What's behind this move by Abdul Fattah Sisi? Well, if you look at the, what's happened in the past couple of days, it's not just the protest over the killing um, of a taxi driver. There's been a series of um, deaths at the hands of police that have led to mass protests um, of the doctors last week, of um, several rural areas in Egypt where thousands are coming back to the streets. Now, when thousands of people come into the street to protest against police brutality, this is very unsettling for the regime because if we recall, the initial moment of the January 25th revolution was essentially against police brutality because of the death of Khaled Said at the hands of the police. So what you're seeing is a return to mass demonstrations against police brutality. And although it didn't reveal anything new, perhaps, about police abuses in Egypt, was the murder and abduction of Italian student Giulio Regini something of a turning point? Yeah, sure. 
it, it could be marked as a turning point because it brought international attention. But I think we have to take a longer view of the past year. In August of last year, in 2015, um, President Sisi passed a couple of laws, and one of them was the terrorism law. And in the terrorism law, basically, police and military are um, immune from prosecution and being held accountable for basically what he calls performing their acts, which is if they are seen as using force against um, breaking protests, they're immune from prosecution against this. So what this created in Egypt was a culture of um, encur encouraging or actually looking the other way for police brutality. And so this culture, once it continues and it grows, we see as police see themselves as immune. So they can go into a hospital and beat up doctors who refuse to falsify reports. They can go into a taxi and if they don't like the fare, kill um, the taxi driver. And once you have this kind of brute force entering into society and it looks like the regime is making it acceptable and these are beyond the, the scope of the law, what you're having is a culture that is being supported by the regime. Are we likely to see any change in the culture of police impunity, uh, the kind of uh, lack of accountability that you describe? Will there come a point where the regime sees the actions of the police and the security forces as a threat to their survival rather than something that reinforces it? Well, protests have been called for tomorrow for a return to, um, by the physicians to return to the street against police brutality. And it's interesting that this comes the day before this call for people to come to the street. So we should wait and see what happens tomorrow and how the state responds to it. But if the state doesn't actually start to hold its security apparatus accountable for what happens to the average citizens, then what's happening is a fomenting of a level of frustration against the very people that are supposed to protect protect the citizenry. And once you have a, a culture of repression that um, leads to a fomenting of um, resentment by the citizenry against the state, what you're leading to is an unstable moment that could lead to a counter-revolution. Thanks very much. Dalia Fahmi, live for us from New York. Appreciate your time.